people are always coming to me and saying, Pez, listen, you've sold me on this idea of FPGA gaming. There's just one problem. The device itself, the Mr. device, is just far too big. I haven't got the sort of mansion that could encompass having an entire D10 Nano and all of the daughter boards um, attached to it. Um, what do you expect? Do you think I'm some sort of millionaire? There's no way that thing will fit in my house. And I've always said, listen, you know, create a room just for the Mr. device. It'll be worth it. Yes, it's a bit big, but, you know, do you want to play games um, that have been recreated um, at a logic gate level or do you not want to play games that have been recreated at a logic gate level? I'm sorry, but sometimes you've just got to compromise. And in this case, um, Mr. FPGA device, yes, it might be absolutely gigantic, but on the flip side, you're going to be able to enjoy that sweet, sweet FPGA goodness. Um, and so people have said, John, you know, or, or Pez82, they would say probably, um, has this always been, is this always going to be an issue? Is there ever going to be a world where I'll be able to fit uh, an FPGA device into a normal sized house? I be dang. PGA news, PGA news, news, news. Stay tuned for more of Pez's FPGA adventures. Tonight, an earthquake shakes the retro gaming world. Billions wiped off analog stock price. Mr. FPGA enthusiasts face an uncertain future. And Project Babylon 5, the crown jewel of FPGA gaming investments, is in ruins. We begin with breaking news, chaos in the FPGA gaming sector. The announcement of the tank console by Cypeda sent shockwaves through the market, leaving competitors scrambling to respond. Shares of Analog Inc. plummeted 87% overnight, erasing $600 billion in market value. The once dominant Mr. ecosystem is now in financial freefall, with companies like Mr. Add-ons, Ultimate Mr. and Mr. FPGA.co.uk filing for bankruptcy protection. Sorg himself was reportedly last seen fleeing the country and putting his I.O. boards on eBay. This is unprecedented. One announcement, just one, from Cypede, and the entire industry is in turmoil. It's a speculative fury. Will it succeed? Will it fail? Nobody knows, but the Tang console has already changed the game. So what do we actually know about the Tang console? Well, not much, but that hasn't stopped the hype machine. We know it's small, incredibly small, measuring just 65mm by 56mm. Cypeed claims it's the future of retro gaming FPGA systems, and at $69 for the 60K model, or $99 for the 138K version, it's affordable. We also know it uses a GoIn FPGA chip, and, is, and based on Cypeed's other projects, it could be a very capable platform. Cypeed has form here. Their Tang Primer 25K, another tiny FPGA board, already has a working SNES core. It's proof that Cypede can deliver functional FPGA solutions at an unbelievably low cost. But the Tang console? It's still in the pre-order phase. Nobody's actually got their hands on it yet. And nobody's seen it in action other than a short video on X. So as far as we know, its final capabilities remain shrouded in mystery. Could it be the ultimate retro gaming solution? Or is it destined to join the ranks of promising but flawed FPGA hardware? Only time will tell. What is undeniable, however, is how the Tang console compares to its biggest rival, the Mr. FPGA, in terms of development costs. Mr. FPGA has received trillions of dollars in Patreon funding. I would say every dollar has been well spent. However, 
the Cypede development of the Tang console was built on a budget of £3.50 and whatever components they could salvage from the AliExpress janitor's vacuum cleaner, they didn't even bother emptying the dust bag first. But let's imagine what this console could become if it lives up to the hype. We could be looking at the smallest most affordable FPGA console ever made. A device capable of running NES, SNES, Mega Drive, Game Boy and Amiga right out of the box. And Cypede has even hinted at future support for cores like the Neo Geo and PlayStation. If that happens, the Mr FPGA crew will have to answer some hard questions about why it still requires half your house to function. I mean, that's probably the one thing that I hear time and time again from Mr FPGA owners. Why does it have to be so goddamn big? Who can disagree? Of course it's all speculative right now. That little tang console is little more than a press release and a pre-order page. And for all we know the pre-orders are funding the CEO's holiday to the Maldives. And if that turns out to be vaporware, at least it'll look good in the promo pictures. Mr FPGA was a marvel of engineering, but its size was its ultimate downfall. I had to evict my kids to make space for my Mr setup. It started with an FPGA hub, and before I knew it, the entire garage was gone. My wife made me choose, the mister or her. I'm now divorced, but at least I've got my FPGA cause. Entire families have been torn apart, homes converted into mister-only zones. And let's not forget the infamous Tokyo firmware incident of 2024, when the mister FPGA was mistaken for a new skyscraper during a firmware update. The Tang console represents something new, a device that promises compact affordable retro gaming without the complexity or cost of its competitors. Whether it delivers on that promise we'll just have to wait and see, but for now let's all take a moment to appreciate the chaos it's caused in the FPGA gaming world. Thanks for watching, and remember, the only thing in retro gaming that has to be huge is Pez82's ego. Good night. Not emulation, yes it is Simulation, my recreation, my recreation